topic title for today is creating curiosity on social media training number 293 this is your host brandon boyd excited to be here where every tuesday i try and bring the value whether it's on morning motivation or business building entrepreneurship and so forth is i want to help you guys with your life with your business your personal relationships your health and so forth so today we're going to talk about creating curiosity on social media I do have, I'll just say at least a little bit of credibility. I've, I have enrolled personally thousands of people uh, over the last number of years, and I have not reached out to one person, not one. I wish I could show my phone records. Not one person have I reached out to in nearly nine years. Think about that. I have not contacted one person trying to pitch them my idea, to tell them about my business. Now, before that, I always used to have to reach out to people because it was a different time. But thank goodness to social media and to me putting out over 2,000 YouTube videos over time and uh, doing Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and all that, that I was able to start attracting people to want to know more because of the value that I was putting out. So I I want to talk about this today and how to help you guys as well for those who are doing this business or some some other kind of business, everything I teach today will work for all of the above, frankly. And this is really how to create curiosity. And so I'm gonna give you some of the main points. Number one is all, almost all of your posts that you do, whether it's a wall post, a story, something like that, they should have some element of curiosity in them about what people do for a living. So what is it that you do for a living? now? If you're saying it all the time on a daily basis, people will get annoyed. You will wear out your audience. And just remember, we are not spamming people. Okay, number two is we don't name the company, the products and so forth. Now, I'm at a point now where I could actually name my company. I could name the products. I could say impulse. I could say swipe coin, stuff like that. But that's only because I already have a following. So I'm talking about the people that are trying to really build up their social media. You don't put a company name. Why? Because they will Google the name. They'll go to scam.com, ripoffreport.com, Better Business Bureau, and so forth. And they'll say, see, two people complained about the company back in 2015. I'm not joining. They're going to find negative information. Or here's what's worse. They see that you put the company name or a product and they end up joining somebody else. And that joining somebody else is they join me. (laughs) you put that out and they're like, I need to be with somebody who's a big leader, not this loser. I mean, this person over here that's not making any money that tried to pitch this to me. You know what I'm saying? So this is why you don't want to put the company name, the product names and so forth. Number three is you want to focus on shouting out success. So this is one of the reasons why every Friday I put out the master's club flyers on my stories, multiple channels. So stories, Facebook group, uh, Telegram, and stuff like that. And the reason being is because people just want to know what it's doing for people. They don't even care about all the details and all the science behind it. At least most people don't. Some do. But most people just want to know what is it doing. So, for example, let's say I were to put out flyers and it said, hey, these people on the flyers, it represents that they have lost 20 pounds in the last 90 days. Now, it didn't say everything they ate, what they did, how much they exercised and so forth. It was just to keep it generic so that they would want more information about how these people are losing weight. So I focus on shouting out success. So the testimonials of people who are succeeding with it and testimonials outside of yourself, because if it's only you and they don't see that other people are winning, that becomes a problem because they don't really see that others are involved besides yourself. So this is really a call to action to join you to join the movement. So in doing this, by the way, showing compliant results of you and your customers and every company is different, but I know with what we do, it is very, very important to be compliant because of trading and things like that, that you don't want to be putting out things, especially out there to the public that could cause compliance issues. Okay. So I just want to give an example, and this is something, this is an actual example I did that I copied and pasted onto here that I wanted to give to you guys for something that actually worked. I just said, hey, I want to shout out my friend and I just kept it blank, who is crushing it. They've been using our system for two weeks and they're already making money. Great job. Now that was in a group that we put out 
and I ran it through compliance and they told me that it was okay to post something like that because I didn't say how much they made, what percentage and all that. I just said that they have been crushing it. They've been using the system for two weeks. They're already starting to make money. Now, someone could say, well, that's still an income claim. The key is, is that you want to keep things very generic. So for example, if it was a weight loss product, I could say, hey, they have been using this for 30 days and they've already lost seven pounds. Click here for more information. And it could then go to maybe a company website, a video or something like that. You're trying to keep the post as generic as possible, but this is third party validation. So what I just showed you right here is really powerful because it's beyond yourself. They need to see, they need to hear that other people outside of you are actually winning inside the company. Okay. So I want to give you that simple example. Notice there's no company name. There's no product name. It gets people to reach out to you without you having to say, Hey, hit me up, DM me and so forth. A lot of times I don't even have to put a call to action because it's already kind of giving them what they need. And if they're interested, they're actually going to reach out to you. Okay. All right. Now a, a question that comes up that I get asked a lot is how often should I post curiosity posts on my wall? This is a personal opinion. It's, you know, it's not doctrine by any means, but I do it about one to two times a week. Um, a lot of the types of posts I have, if you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, stuff like that is my curiosity posts about what I do might be once or twice a week between the wall and stories. The rest of the stuff is uplifting. It's motivating. It's family, it's health, it's fitness, it's a thought of the day, stuff like that. The curiosity post, I just want to sprinkle it here and there because again, you don't want to wear out your audience with you constantly pitching your business, entrepreneurship, travel, because for most people, those things are actually, just so you understand, those things are actually a turnoff, all right? And so you want to be careful how often you are posting about that. Now, how often should I post curiosity posts on my stories? For me, it's every day. I do not go a day without posting multiple times a day. If you were to go onto my social media right now, you'll probably see stories on there. If you don't, I would be shocked. Okay. A few times a day, I pose a question. You could do polls. I mean, someone like Alex Morton's great. You go to his stories. He does this all the time. Uh, you know, for people to comment, actually people can then send the comments because you're doing the posts, you're, you're asking questions, you're doing a poll and you know, you want to show the results of people winning in a compliant way. So on the stories, it, I find that it's really, really effective and you can actually see who's actually looking at your stories as well, which also gives you a chance to reach out to those people that are actually seeing it. Okay. Now at the end of the day, what people want to see is results. That's the only thing they care about. It's what can this do for me? Not what is this about? You know, I think a lot of times when people see something, they think to themselves, could I do that? Is that something that could work for me? Could I see like, would I, do I have the time? Am I willing to put in the time to do that? Do I have the money to do that? But a lot of times it's just, what can this do for me? And can I actually do it? Could I trade like that and make that kind of money? Could I um, build a business and hit that rank to qualify for a trip? You know what I'm saying? So what can it do for me? How can it change my situation? How can it help me to free up time? These are thoughts that come to people's mind. Most people don't like what they do for a living. That's the truth. They, they'd rather be doing something else. So these are good things to think about. Okay, guys, if you want to get access to this, I'm going, uh, all you have to do is just put it on a message right into Instagram, Brandon Boyd official. I'm going to give you guys a recording. I'll actually give you access to this PowerPoint and PDF. And that way that you can take some of these nuggets. I gave just some very simple ones. I have actually five social media trainings, five. Okay. This is one of them called create curiosity on social media. Okay. I have five. I'm going to give you access to all five as we go through these every single Tuesday to help you to attract more people to your business. And I believe that over a period of time that you guys can be successful with this. So with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day. We'll see you next Tuesday on our next business building training.